Hey, KU fans, welcome back to KU Sports Extra here at KUSports.com. I'm at Allen Fieldhouse, and I'm joined by Benton Smith. Benton Smith, who wrote about Mitch Lightfoot tonight. I bet you didn't see that coming when KU no. and Baylor locked horns to start the night, huh? I, I, I did not see that coming for sure. Um, and I'm sure no one thought Mitch Lightfoot would be playing a, a starring role in this game. But, you know, let's, let's talk about all the other good stuff because there's plenty of it to talk about. Yeah, Mitch was great, though. I mean, those minutes he played late in the game uh, with David McCormick on the bench with four fouls, just massive, massive minutes. Um, and, and, you know, not just, like, holding the line. He, he, he freaking took the fight to Baylor. I mean, he, right. po he posted and <laughs> made a move or two. I, I mean, it, that, it was that, like, that was the most impressive part about it, right? 1990s basketball, throw it down to the block and let your big man go to work. And there he went over, right over Vital. And I mean, Vital's a really good post defender. So, I mean, that, that was impressive. And it, I mean, it was a five point game at that point. And uh, KU's lead was up to 10 by the time that uh, Lightfoot checked out and McCormick came back in. Well, let's tell people what happened in case they don't know. KU wins <laughs> it 71 to 58 over second ranked and previously unbeaten Baylor. Uh, I mean, you could say that a million different ways how big this win was, but I don't ever think you could overstate it. I think you could call it the biggest win of the season. I think you could call it the biggest win maybe in college basketball for a lot of teams. You could definitely call it KU's most memorable win in a long time. I mean, it was just a, a, a victory that this team needed to, if they were going to prove that, hey, we can actually make a run. And mm -hmm. I know Baylor's been off. I know they were off tonight. Um, it's still a really good team, and they're really good defensively. And KU absolutely hung with them, outplayed them, and, and deserve every bit of credit that they get for this win. This proves, right, that they can play with anybody. And this yep. is, that's something they believed all along. And, and I think, you know, they probably didn't need this one to continue believing it, but I think their confidence grows a level now, and even they believe it more. But I think the rest of the world needed to see this if they were going to take it serious. If, if KU or anyone was going to say, these guys can make a run, they had to have something like this to show that. And now they have it. And now all bets are off. You just the, – the possibilities are kind of endless for the rest of the season at this point. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we'd been waiting to, to see for months now, right, was some proof that they actually, you know, could play at this level. And, I mean, they, they came through with that tonight. So, uh, I mean – now, now you have to get the consistency part of it, right? Sure. Because sure. because there's obviously been fluctuation with individual players, with you know how the team plays overall, and I I think it's it's not surprising at all that self kind of mentioned how you can kind of weather those inconsistencies is by just playing at a high level defensively, and you know that that helps you kind of withstand the the unpredictabilities of you know open three-pointers rimming out when when they shouldn't you know and um and that type of thing or you know a guy getting into foul trouble that you have to have on the floor um if, if your whole team is is locked in defensively which this team now is um you know obviously a fantastic effort led by marcus garrett especially you, you talk about like the last time these two teams met and jared butler was just unstoppable and marcus garrett made sure that nothing like that was going to happen tonight uh, just another uh, and, and so fitting for him to do that on, on his senior night too to just have a, a kind of marquee defensive performance like that yeah I spent a lot of time looking ahead this week to what Marcus Garrett's senior night line would be because I I'll be honest I wanted to see the guy get a triple double he's he's flirted with ten a points, few ten rebounds and assists or 10 steals or whatever yeah, it is right. you know he, he could get it however he wants but but that was my mistake, man, because really his line doesn't matter. It was good. I mean, it, he had 14 points. He had seven rebounds. He dished two assists. He didn't turn the ball over one time. That's a great line. But none of that matters compared to what you just talked about, which was his defense. And, yeah, a lot of it was on Jared Butler. He was ready for that challenge. But they switch on other guys, too. Yep. And he, he, he didn't miss a beat no matter who he was guarding tonight. He was tough. He fought. He fought offensively. I think when KU had nothing going offensively, there were times where Garrett was just bound and determined to get to the rim. It didn't look pretty. Story of his career, though, right? I mean, it, <laughs> it doesn't always look pretty, but, man, he gets the job freaking done. 
what a night, what a performance. You said it, very pro appropriate for that to be this guy's senior night. Um, and, you know, the one guy in the crowd, I don't know if you guys heard it on TV or whatever, but there's a guy in the crowd during his senior speech. I'm sure many people were thinking it, but there was one guy who oiled up the lungs and, and let it out and said, one more year. And Garrett paused <laughs> and smiled and put his head down. And I asked him after the game, what, how that sound? What'd you think of that? And he said, sounded okay. Sounded pretty good or something. So yeah, I don't yeah. think it's out of the question that he could come back. I mean, he, he said that earlier this week that he still hasn't ruled it out, but I think he wants to go pro. I think he wants to go take a shot somewhere. And, and so not a bad fallback plan if that's how it works out. But um, let's talk about David McCormick, 20 points, eight of 10 shooting. Did he have wow. K's first eight points? Yeah. Um, he played really aggressive early which is what we've seen before, but a lot of times he's played too aggressive early and mm -hmm. that's led to missing those bunnies. Tonight it was really aggressive. It was with a purpose and uh, my God, he got him off to such a good start with his energy and then obviously putting the ball in the basket. So a really, really good night for him. He had the right amount, the right mixture, the right recipe of energy and emotion combined with that free mind and just poise that he talks about. So um, what stood out to you about him? Just a, just a monster performance. So Baylor had no answer for him. No, no, not at all. And I mean, how many times have, have we talked about this season? Like if he gets off to a bad start, I mean, KU is kind of doomed, right? Cause right, you know, right. whether it's uh, two quick fouls or just, you know, playing sped up and, you know, not, not finishing because of just being too amped up. Isn't that what self said earlier this week? Sometimes he, he flat out just tries too hard. Yeah. Like he, he wants he wants to do so well and you know sometimes it's it's to his detriment. But I mean he he was perfect uh, offensively tonight, I thought. And um I mean just there there's no way that, that they win this game without him, you know, coming up with that type of night. And I also loved after the game that self was like on him for not having more than three rebounds, which which of course he was going to. But yeah. Hey, uh, you can't blame him. You can't blame him. No. <laughs> the guy's got to rebound more than three. But when Jalen Wilson grabs 14, when Marcus Garrett gets his yeah. hands on everything he can grab, it, you know, it, there's not a lot out there to be, to be grabbed. So, you know, you, you take that kind of offense from him, you'll live with the rebounds, whatever he gives you. Um, you know, I think we could go player by player, but I don't necessarily know that we need to. I thought DeWan Harris hit a huge shot. Uh, oh, um, wow. I mean, I don't know that you can – say how big that shot was because Baylor was closing and they were yeah. starting to make KU feel hot under the collar. Yeah. He's wide open. Again, that's what the coaches have been talking about all year. He's got to look to score. He's got to take that shot. Ideally, they say he's got to make that shot, but at least he has to take it. He took it and he buried it tonight. And uh, it, it was a big shot when Baylor was really putting some game pressure on Kansas. Well, yeah, I thought, I mean, he, he scored back to back buckets there um right. he got that that cut for a layup and it wasn't an easy finish either I mean he had to beat a big man to the rim and he did and those five points came right after uh Ochai fouled that uh was it Teague on the three-pointer for a right right play. right right yep and then it, the Baylor bench exploded that seemed like to me I was like oh here comes ba here comes Baylor now you know they've they've got some life finally and uh those those Harris baskets were crucial I think that's a great thing you brought up there because I thought that a lot tonight, Benton. I thought, I thought here comes Baylor. And they took a couple of leads, and, and they did look great in stretches, uh, especially with their defense. And every time they did, Kansas had an answer, and usually a pretty quick answer and a pretty profound answer and one that was sustained and, and really gave KU control of the game again. It was very obvious that KU, with the energy in the building, and just their desire after giving one away on Tuesday at Texas and after Baylor beat them once before, it was very obvious that they wanted this one. So they were turned up at the start. And, you know, it's not hard to play better than the other team in the first five minutes when that's the circumstances. But can you continue that? And for a while, you know, Baylor hit them with that 10-0 run and took the lead, even though KU had played great, they're, they're trailing. I mean, you didn't know how they were going to respond. Now you saw and, and now you do know. And I think – Self said after the game, before he introduced Marcus Garrett on the floor for his senior speech, he, he said, these guys are just hitting their stride. I mean, he said it on the microphone to the whole crowd. And I think that's the best way to put it because we've talked about what this last stretch has done, what the five game winning streak did, uh, even what playing well at Texas did and having a chance in that one. But this is, this is exactly what they're doing. They're hitting their stride. They're, they're doing the classic like peak at the right time thing. Right. And mm -hmm. I want to, that's what I kind of want to finish on. I want to ask you like, 
what do you view this team as? I mean, I, th- I think they've got a chance to be a three seed in the tournament. Yeah, is, I think, I think they – serious uh, stuff. That's a right. team that can make a run. Yeah, they were um, showing some, some live kind of bracketology updates during the game. And, I mean, this was before the outcome that uh, they had uh, – I guess the ESPN, they had KU on a, on a three line during this game. So, you know, now they have this, their best one of the season behind them too. And, you know, obviously UTEP is, is not the type of team you expect to, to come in and upset KU. So you get to maybe even improve your resume some more at the Big 12 tournament where every team you face is, you know, could be a, a tournament level team or sure. is a tournament team. Sure. There's like seven of the 10, 10 teams projected to go, go in. So, yeah, I mean, they, they could build upon this resume pretty easily and, but I mean, a, a three seed, like you mentioned, obviously is a, a team you got to pay attention to, especially since they're actually kind of hitting their stride at this this time of the year. That's exactly right. And you know what? The thing about that three seed, they've ever since they kind of righted the ship, right? They've been on that four or five line, and you always look at that and you say, "Geez, that's a that's a game against Gonzaga, or a game against Baylor, or a game against Michigan in the Sweet 16." Well, if they're able to get down to the three line. That's a game against a very different opponent in the Sweet 16 all of a sudden. And that gives you a chance to move on. And, and you know, they've got, they're, they're going to have to play good basketball. They're, they're still a team that, you know, is prone to lapses. They made three of, what, 18 shots tonight? Three of 16 from three-point range? Yeah. I mean, as well as they played and as much as this was a feel-good win and a signature win, it was very clear that Bill Self was still looking at that number going, yeah, we – we sure have to make some more shots than that, you know, because <laughs> yeah, you can play great defense, but boy, just think about if they, I mean, they were one for eight in the first half and then two for eight in the second half. Just think if, if they make one more each half, what that, what that does to this, this game. I mean, it's probably a double digit lead most of the way for KU then, or at least most of the second half. So it, they got to find a way to make some shots again. I, I mean, tonight you got one from Bryce Thompson. You got one from Dewan Harris. Who, who hit the other one? Ochai, he finally did hit one. So yep, yep. Ochai's got to hit more. That's the bottom line because you can't count on the rest of those guys to do it. Um, anything else stand out before we get out of here? I, I just think the the team defense, what I, Self has uh, been using the term like, you know, playing connected a lot recently. And I mean, he, I mean, he gushed about how well they played defensively as a team tonight. And I mean, you had to, uh, they, they, they played so well. And this, this Baylor team has been so good offensively. And, you know, obviously they're, they're still kind of recovering from this, you know, kind of COVID issue that they had. And they're not back to being the, the Baylor team we saw, you know, in December and January. But uh, that, that team was – that team had struggles scoring against Kansas tonight. And, and that's, that's because of how, you know, intense Kansas played on the defensive end and – how well they were talking and, you know, communicating and switching when they needed to and not switching when they didn't need to. And I mean, it was, they, they did exactly what you'd want to see out of a, a team defensively. Yeah. Well said. I think it's uh it's really wild. KU wins at 71 58 over number two Baylor. They does what they do. They don't does. They do what nobody else has been able to do this year so far. And that gives you confidence. Uh, it improves Kansas to 18 and eight. 12 and six in big play, big 12 play. They're the first one to get to the finish line. They played all 18. Those are remarkable feats in and of themselves. But if you think about a couple of those games, they let get away the Oklahoma state game down there. They're winning with 80 seconds left. The Texas game the other night, they get it to overtime. They could have won that one. A couple others, maybe, but those two jump out. If those go the other way, this team's 14 and four in big 12 play. And for a team that has really been, criticized and a lot of groaning and moaning about all season. They're that close to being 14 and four in the freaking big 12 and still 12 and six is a pretty good record too. So um, I think these guys have stuck together in that way all season. I think they've cared very little about what's said outside and, (laughs) and cared only what they think in the locker room. Yeah. And I will give them a ton of credit because I think all year long, they have believed that they are the team we saw out here tonight. They haven't been that team very often, but they sure as heck were tonight, and they did it at the right time and, and got a signature victory out of it. And uh, I think that's why you see their confidence just exploding right now. So 
the UTEP game, it can't live up to this, but it could be a, uh, a good game for some of those guys to, to maybe get some extended minutes and feel good and, and just roll over a team. Yeah, that, that that can kind of add to look now. Hey, w- maybe they go score eighty five against UTEP, and all of a sudden they think we're great defensively. We put up eighty five tonight. There's nothing we can't do. <laughs> it's going to be a big Tristan and Aruna night. That's a great way to put Thursday. it. That's a great way to put it. Tonight was a Marcus Garrett night. Tonight was an everybody night. I'm just an yeah. absolutely perfect team win for Kansas. Uh, a, a game they really needed to prove that they're a legitimate contender, and I don't think there's anybody that can say they're not right now. You said it. Consistency still has to show up, but they have this in them, and not a lot of teams do. So it'll be a wild next couple of weeks. Obviously, Selection Sunday is on March 14th. Before that, though, they'll play UTEP March 4th, and uh, and then it's on, man, and then it's the postseason, and we get to do what we didn't get to do last year, <laughs> and uh, that sounds like a damn good time to me. For Benton Smith, I'm Matt Tate. KU wins it here at Allen Fieldhouse, 71-58 over number two Baylor. KU will move up in the rankings, even though they lost to Texas. I'm going to guess they'll be 13th or 14th. They're 6-8 and eight now in quadrant one wins in the net rankings. I mean, their resume is just starting to look really, really nice. And this is the cherry on top of it. We'll talk to you guys again real soon on another episode of KU Sports Extra. Thanks for checking this one out. And have a great rest of your weekend.